Okay, so now I'm gonna work some examples from a uh, class that we worked earlier. And we've got this first equation to solve that's got all these messy fractions in them. So we're gonna take a step to get rid of those fractions. You know I don't enjoy the fractions either. So we are going to find the least common denominator of the two denominators that we have so we can clear them out of there. So the least common denominator for two and four is gonna be four. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna multiply all of the individual little terms in this equation by four. Remember to keep the equation balanced. If you multiply some things by four, you gotta do everything by four so that it stays balanced. So if I do that, I've got a four that is gonna cancel out with this two and it's just gonna make it a two times x. So I'm gonna write two x. That four times one is simply gonna be a plus four. If I multiply this four over one times one over four, we know from our multiplicative inverse property, they're just gonna cancel each other out. So that's leaving me with just a one X. And then a four times six is gonna leave me with a minus 24. Now we've got a much easier equation to solve that doesn't have those fractions in there. And we've got a variable on both sides. Remember that when you have a variable on both sides, one of them's gotta go because what we need is a variable on one side and a number on the other side. And the same way that you can cancel out numbers, you can also cancel out variables. So if I've got the same equation right here, I can literally just reach on this little balance beam right here, and I can just pull that x off. But of course, if I pull off this x over here on this right-hand side, I'm gonna have to pull off an x on the left-hand side too, because again, it's an equation, gotta keep it balanced. So I'm going to subtract x from the right-hand side. I should note that I really could have subtracted the 2x from the, as well. I just choose not to. I choose to get rid of the smaller variable, or the smaller number of variables, I should say, because then I don't have to deal with negative numbers. So I took an x away from this side, which means I need to take an x away from that side. So if I have two x's and I take one of them away, that's going to leave me with an x plus 4. And be very careful, lots of people, when they bring this number down, forget and drop that negative. So remember that this is a negative 24. So if I'm keeping track of my steps so far, after I use my least common denominator to get rid or clear out all of those denominators, now I had to subtract an x from both sides. I'm going to now look, and all I've got left is a measly old one-step equation to cancel out. So I'm going to cancel out a plus 4 with a minus 4. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So that is going to leave me with an x is equal to negative 28. Of course, I'm not finished until I've gone back and I've checked my answer. So I'm going to take the original problem. And I'm going to substitute my... Uh, I didn't really leave myself enough room there. Here, let me go ahead and do this. I'm going to substitute that value in there. So one fourth x minus six. Okay, all I did at first was just rewrite the original problem. Now I'm gonna take my solution and I'm gonna substitute it in for x. So instead of x divided by two, I'm gonna do negative 28 divided by two plus one. Instead of one fourth times x, I'm gonna do one fourth times negative 28. So I'm gonna clear that out of there first. So negative 28 divided by two is negative 14 plus 1 over there on the left-hand side. A negative 28 times 1 fourth is a negative 7. And then don't forget about that minus 6 I kind of left up there hanging. So negative 14 plus 1 is negative 13. Negative 7 minus 6 is negative 13. So because both sides match after I substituted in the 28 or the negative 28, I know I've gotten the correct answer. So I would love for you to try this one on your own. I am not gonna pause the video. I'm gonna keep on working, but hopefully at home you've paused the video or you're looking at your notes so that you know um, what you're doing. Try it out and then repause the video with me. My first step is that I'm gonna get rid of all these denominators. The least common denominator of three and six is six. So that means I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna multiply everything by a six. To keep it balanced, you have to multiply every single term in this equation by 6. And I'm also going to show this step kind of in the middle here so that you see 
where I got the division from. So I did 6 times 2, which got me a 12. Still have that denominator there. 6 times 1 is going to give me a 6 over 6 Q. That's 6 times 5 is going to give me 30 over 6 Q. And then 6 times 1 is going to give me 6 over 3. Now I'm going to go through and simplify and clear out those denominators. So 12 over 3 is 4. 6 over 6 is 1, which means I've just got 1 Q. 30 divided by 6 is 5 Q. Plus 6 divided by 3 is 2. Now I've got a much easier equation to solve that doesn't have all those fractions in it because I've cleared out that denominator. I could get rid of the 5Q if I wanted to, but it seems much easier just to get rid of the 1Q. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to subtract a Q from each side, which leaves me with a 4 equals 4Q plus 2. If I look at what I've got left over here, I've got a plus 2 that I need to get rid of. So I'm going to do that by doing a minus 2. I need to subtract 2 from both sides. So that is going to leave me with a 2 is equal to 4Q. And this is where sometimes we get a little bit messed up. We think, oh no, it's not going to turn out to be a whole number. And you're right, it's not, because we're going to divide both sides. I'm going to clear out this example here for a second. We're going to divide both sides by 4. And I do not want you to do 2 divided by 4 to get a decimal. Instead, I want you to leave it as a fraction. 2 over 4, of course, is going to be 1 half. So 1 half is equal to Q. I need to go back and check my work. So I'm going to write the original problem. So 2 thirds plus 1 6 Q is equal to 5 6 Q plus 1 third. And I'm going to substitute the 1 half in for the Q. So this becomes 2 thirds plus 1 6 times 1 half equal to 5 6 times 1 half plus 1 third. So all I did was take the original equation and replace that Q with 1 half. I'm going to go through and do my multiplication first because order of operations says so. So this becomes 2 thirds plus 1 over 12. This side becomes 5 twelfths plus 1 third. I have to get common denominators here. So this one becomes 8 12 plus 1 twelfths. This one becomes 5 twelfths plus 4 twelfths. And as you can see, I get 9 over 12 for this side, which is also equal to 9 over 12 for that side. So I know for a fact that I did this question correctly.